this is MSJ Chem. In this video I'll be looking at oxidation states. Let's start with an important point about oxidation states. Oxidation states are written with the plus or minus first followed by the number. For example, plus 2, not 2 plus. And as we've seen in a previous video, oxidation is an increase in oxidation state and reduction is a decrease in oxidation state. For example, in this reaction, the zinc has an oxidation state of 0 and the copper 2 plus ion has an oxidation state of plus 2. The zinc 2 plus ion has an oxidation state of plus 2 and the copper has an oxidation state of 0. For the zinc, we have an increase in oxidation state from 0 to plus 2, therefore the zinc is being oxidized. The copper 2 plus ion has an oxidation state of plus 2 and the copper has an oxidation state of 0. That's a decrease in oxidation state, therefore the copper 2 plus ion is being reduced. Next we'll have a look at the rules for assigning oxidation states. So our first rule, in an ionic compound the oxidation state of each species is the same as the charge on the ion. For example, the ionic compound sodium chloride is composed of sodium ions and chloride ions. The charge on the sodium ion is 1 plus, the charge on the chloride ion is 1 negative. The oxidation state of the sodium is therefore plus 1 and the oxidation state of the chloride ion is negative 1. For covalent compounds, assume that the more electronegative atom has a negative oxidation state and the less electronegative atom has a positive oxidation state. For example, carbon tetrachloride CCl4 is a covalent compound. Chlorine has a higher electronegativity than carbon, so we give chlorine the negative oxidation state and carbon the positive oxidation state. Moving on to the next rule. The sum of the oxidation states in a neutral compound is equal to zero. Both CH4 methane and NH3 ammonia are neutral compounds. In methane, the carbon has an oxidation state of negative four and the hydrogen has an oxidation state of plus one. The plus one oxidation state on the four hydrogens cancel out the negative four on the carbon. Therefore, the sum of the oxidation states is equal to zero. If we look at ammonia, the plus one oxidation state on the three hydrogens cancels out the negative three on the nitrogen. Therefore, the sum of the oxidation states is equal to zero. Next, the sum of the oxidation states in a polyatomic ion is equal to the charge on the ion. Here we have the sulfate ion, which is SO4 two negative. The oxidation state of the oxygen is negative two. We have 4 of them so we can multiply that by 4 to give us a charge of negative 8. The overall charge on the sulphate ion is 2 negative, therefore the oxidation state for the sulphur is plus 6. Next we look at elements. Elements have an oxidation state of 0. Some examples are copper and iron which are both in the solid state which means they're elements. We also have diatomic molecules such as bromine, chlorine and oxygen. They are all elements, therefore they have an oxidation state of zero. Our next rule, oxygen in a compound has an oxidation state of negative two, except in peroxides when it is negative one. So here's some examples. In carbon dioxide, the oxidation state of the carbon is plus four and the oxidation state of the oxygen is negative two. In water, the oxidation state of the hydrogen is plus one and the oxidation state of the oxygen is negative two. In hydrogen peroxide, the oxidation state of the hydrogen is plus one, but the oxidation state of the oxygen is negative one. And finally, we have our last few rules for assigning oxidation states. Hydrogen in a compound has an oxidation state of plus one, except in metal hydrides when it is negative one. Here we have sodium hydride, the sodium has an oxidation state of plus one and the hydrogen has an oxidation state of negative one. This is quite a rare example and in most examples we look at hydrogen as an oxidation state of plus one. Group one and group two elements in compounds have oxidation states of plus one and plus two respectively. And finally, fluorine in compounds 
always has an oxidation state of negative 1. Next we'll have a look at a couple of examples. The first example is deduce the oxidation state of sulphur in H2SO4 which is sulfuric acid. From the rules we've just looked at we know that hydrogen has an oxidation state of plus 1 and there's two hydrogens in the formula therefore it has the charge of plus 2. Oxygen has an oxidation state of negative 2 and there's four oxygens in the formula therefore we have an overall charge of negative 8. There's no charge on the compound therefore the sulphur in H2SO4 has an oxidation state of plus 6. You should keep in mind that sulphur has different oxidation states depending on which compound it's in. And our last example deduce the oxidation state of the chromium in potassium dichromate. Potassium is a group 1 metal therefore it has an oxidation state of plus 1. There are two potassiums in the formula therefore we have a charge of plus 2. Oxygen has an oxidation state of negative 2 and there are 7 oxygens in the formula therefore we have an overall negative charge of negative 14. Because there's no overall charge on the compound the oxidation state of the chromium is plus 6. Because chromium can have multiple oxidation states we use Roman numerals in brackets to show the oxidation state of the chromium in potassium dichromate. In the last slide we saw that oxidation states can be represented by a Roman numeral. For example copper can have two oxidation states of plus 1 in Cu2O and plus 2 in CuO. They are named copper 1 oxide and copper 2 oxide. The number in Roman numerals tells you the oxidation state of the copper. And our last example is iron 2 chloride and iron 3 chloride. In iron 2 chloride the iron has an oxidation state of plus 2 and in iron 3 chloride the iron has an oxidation state of plus 3. So that's all from this video. Don't forget to check the video description for a link to a practice worksheet.